Welcome to Excel magic trick number 1478. Hey, in this video, we got to see how to do conditional formatting for the whole row when the event code is a duplicate and the task column contains a special. Here are our topics, and this is the formula we're going to see. Let's go over to the sheet 1478. Here's our data set, event key, customer number, and task. As we're looking down, we can see there's two duplicate event keys, but only this record should be highlighted because it also has special in the task column. When we're looking down here, we have a bunch of duplicates, but only this one should get the formatting for the whole row because it has special and the event key is a duplicate. Now, we're going to create a logical formula and then highlight the entire table, go up to Home, Conditional Formatting, New Rule. And down here, we're going to need a logical formula that will deliver true and false for each cell that will determine if the formatting is applied. Now, it's difficult to create your formula in this dialog box. So instead of doing that, let's create it in the cells, copy it over and down, verify that the patterns of trues and falses are correct for each row. Once we get our formula working, then we can copy the formula, highlight the range, and paste it into that dialog box. Now, the first thing we need to do is for each cell in the row, we need to count how many of each event keys there are. So you ready? In the top cell, I'm going to say count ifs. And I'm going to highlight for criteria range the entire column. Control, Shift, Down Arrow, and F4 to lock it. So there we have criteria range, comma. Now criteria, we click on event key. Now in our last video, we just did this same formula but in a single column, but here, we need the formula to copy over to the side and then down. So that A6, which is really, please lock on A6 as we're copying across the columns, but let it move relatively as we copy down. So I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two, three times. Now notice that A has a dollar sign. That means the A6, when we're copying across the columns, it will remain locked on A. But there's no dollar sign in front of the 6. So when we copy the formula down, 6 will move to 7. So that will work. Now let's close parentheses. This is just the count. Control Enter, copy it over, and I'm going to manually copy it down. Now I'm going to come to the last cell and hit F2 to verify that the cell references are correct. The blue one totally locked on A6 to A38. But look at A6 at the top, of course, now is always locked on A, but 6 was allowed to move to 38. So it definitely got the right cell references. Escape. Now we have what we want, the count for the whole row, the count for the whole row. Now, as we talked about last video, any logical function, whether the if function logical test the OR function, or the AND function. Anytime we have these logical arguments, they interpret, yes, true is true, false is false. But 0 is interpreted as false, and any non-zero number is interpreted as true. So we just need to convert the 1's to zeros, and then we leave all the rest of the numbers not equal to 0. No problem. F2, we simply subtract 1. Control Enter, copy it to the side, and then and then double click and send it down. And there we go. There's our falses. And when we put it inside of the AND function, it will interpret all of those as false and all of these as true. Now, F2 in the upper left-hand corner, after the equal sign, I type AND. Logical test, well, we already got our first one, comma. Second logical test, I need to look at for this row, C6. So I hit the F4 key one, two, three times. I do not want a dollar sign in front of the 6, because when the formula copies down, I want 6 to be free to move to 7. That's our mixed cell reference. 
Now we ask the question of that are you equal to whatever's in C3, and I'm going to lock it with the F4 key in all directions. Now that is our formula, close parentheses, Control Enter, copy it to the side, double click and send it down. And look at that. There's our patterns of trues and falses. Right here, that's a duplicate. It says special, and we have a row of trues. Right here, that's a duplicate. That doesn't say special, so we have a row of falses. Now when you build your formula in the cells, it definitely helps us build the formula, track down any errors, and then verify that it's working. But once you do that, you got to be careful which formula you copy. I'm going to the upper left-hand corner, F2, to put it in edit mode, copying the entire formula, including the equal sign, Control-C, Escape. Now we copy the upper left. So when we select it, we do not want to do that. That is the active cell. The active cell has to be the upper left. Now I'm going to Control Shift Down Arrow to highlight all the way down. And guess what? I'm going to use Control Backspace to jump back to the active cell. So there it is. Copy from the upper left. Highlight with active cell in the upper left. We go to Home, Conditional Formatting, New Rules. Down here to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And click in Format Values where this formula is true. Now I'm going to show you the keyboard for that. I do conditional formatting all the time. Alt-H-L-N, that opens up the dialog box. But look, I want the one at the bottom. So I hit Page Down. Now I want to jump to the next text box. So I hit Tab. Now I want to paste. So I use Control-V. Now there is the formula. That formula is in the dialog box. And in memory, this dialog box will copy the formula from that cell over and down. Now it will be in memory as if each cell has the formula and as if each cell is getting a true and false. That way, when we click Format, and you can use any formatting you want. I'm going to use yellow, click OK. That formatting will be applied when that formula delivers a true. Click OK. Beautiful. Now let's just test this. I'm going to say equals the one above when I hit Enter. Just like that, now that is formatted. Control-Z. All right, so in this video, we saw how to use AND and count ifs, and the fact that any non-zero number is true, zero is false. And we use mixed cell references to create a logical formula that we could use in the conditional formatting dialog box. Now, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. We'll see you next video.